you know, one of the things about this is that you got to be happy. Jim Rohn teaches us, like, he uses the uh, analogy of the seasons. Um, when the seasons hit, you've got to, um, you know, you have to plant in the spring. And then you got to tend to your garden in the summer. You can't disappear in the summer. So otherwise, the bugs and the weeds and everything will take your garden. And then in the fall, you have to harvest. And he teaches us about the har harvest. In other words, the, har the analogy is that, you know, you, you do your hard work. You do the things you're supposed to do. You tend to them all year long. And then when the, when the fruits of your hard labor come in, you reap the harvest. But a couple of things that he says that's super important. Um, he says, whatever you get, you have to harvest without, uh, without apology. So if you did the work, listen to me, if you did the work and you had a bumper crop, you had a great outcome, you got a promotion, you got a big raise, you landed a big deal, a big contract, you made, you sold your business for $5 million, whatever it is, like, Harvest without apology. Do not apologize. All right. Do not apologize uh, for being successful. And I'm going to tell you in the world of bariatrics, in today's world, in society, so many people apologize for being successful. And you need to stop doing that shit. Right. Like you earn it. This belief. Like I did the work, man. I studied. I stayed up late. I did the weekend stuff. So. You know, I, I get my share of haters who thinks that something weird happened, why I retired. I retired at 45. I mean, I was broke at 39, retired at 45, man. And that's because I put in the disciplines. And, I, you know, I don't apologize anymore for that. Exactly, Tess. Tess used to apologize. You work hard on your, like, hey, your sobriety. You work hard on your weight loss journey. You work hard to drink your water and to, to stay dedicated, to be a good human, to go to church every Sunday. Don't, don't apologize. And he also teaches us, part two, harvest without complaint. Harvest without complaint. So if you didn't do the work, you didn't tend the garden all summer, and you just have two measly carrots, don't complain. You didn't do it, right? And I'm going to tell you, as we come out of 2021 <laughs> into 22, there are going to be a lot of bitch ass people complaining. Okay. Um, and that's what you're seeing in this world today is a lot of people who did not do the work who are now complaining. And with the internet and social media and the Twitter, you know who I'm talking about, people can complain. And that's okay. I just don't pay any attention to those complaints. Everybody thinks they have a voice and everybody thinks their opinion is the same as the experts or people who've made it. Like I'm a good dude, but I have mentors because there are things that I don't know that I don't know. And so I do not think that my opinions on certain subjects are as valid or as good or as in depth or as robust or as experiential as my uh, mentors. So if I have a business question and they'll tell me, uh, I don't question it. They'll tell me what to do. So that's the idea. Everyone has an opinion, but they're not all equal, man. They're not all equal. Okay. So what I want to do for the uh, next 30 minutes or so is help you to get your 2022 started off right. Right. Now, most people don't set goals, and the ones who do, don't do it right, right? In fact, we'll do this right now. Don't be, don't, don't apologize. But what, what are some of your goals for 2022? Let's just start a conversation. And I'm going to tell you, you know, no judgment here, man. No judgment because, you know, the last two years have been hard. We have ups and downs. 2020, we were all turning into alcoholics. You know, alcohol sales went through the roof. 2020 was the best year if you owned a liquor store or a used car lot. I'm about to sneeze. Allergies from my fireplace, I'm pretty sure. Okay, so 
Uh, elimination goals. All right. So we're let's get started. Okay. Day six seventy four, last day for the transformation day. Doctor V goal setting using uh, objectives and key key results. Now I want to do a couple of background things real quick. Okay, objectives. Um, I think the best way to do this is is to go this way. Okay, yeah, no, this way. Key results. And the last one, initiatives, initiatives. Today's video, I'll put a link in the day's video, kind of goes through all this for you, okay? Um, objectives, this is what you want. What? Okay. Key results is how you're going to do it. And initiatives are, um, I would call this like the... Uh, daily like the tasks what you're actually doing or this is what you're actually doing okay now where do people mess up write down some of your goals some people say i want to lose weight that's below average thinking you're above average why because you're watching this that's how i know you're above average you know you're up you know, 400 of y'all watching. So, um, but some people, their goal setting ideas like this year is going to be my year. Okay. What are you going to do? I'm going to lose weight. I want to make money. I'm going to get a promotion. I don't know. Some people are so sad. They said, you know, they'll say like, yeah, things have got to change for me. Like, like what, what's going to change? I don't know, but they, they have to change. Things are horrible. I'm stressed out. I'm anxious. And you go, do you have any money? Do you want more money? Oh, it'd be nice to have more money, but it's not that important. Blah, 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 blah. You know these people? If you don't know these people, you are those people. <laughs> you be those people. So slightly above average, we'll say, I want to lose 30 pounds. Slightly above average above that, would be, I'm going to lose 30 pounds this year. Now you have a goal and a deadline. And no, Dr. V, I learned smart goals. I know they have to be specific, measurable, achievable, relative, timely. Da -da, da -da. All right, whatever. All right. Oh, that's these. Excuse me. Freaking allergies. Here's a difference maker. Who wants a difference maker? Objectives. The difference maker is this. Objectives have to be inspirational. Aspirational. They have to inspire you to do stuff. And here's the key. I'm going to write this in red. Non-measurable or non-numeric. So, in other words, the second that you say, I want to lose 10 pounds, numeric, you've already fucked up. Dr. V, I'm going to make $10,000 this year. You've already fucked up. Objectives need to be aspirational, inspirational, and non-numerical. Okay. The key results, however, need to be numerical. Because if anything has a number, if you can measure it, you can analyze it. You can graph it. You can break it down. You can quantify it. That's the key results. So... In other words, what most people do when they say, hey, my goal this year is to lose 10 pounds. That's not a goal. That's the key result. And then the lastly, the initiatives is how. Like what, how in the doing, how in the doing. So, y'all got that? Can I have an aha? Some of you guys 
are going to have major ahas just going, oh, wow, I fucked that up. Because average thinking, remember, you don't want to be average, guys. Average in America means you're overweight, right? Over two-thirds of Americans are overweight. A third of Americans are obese. Average Americans living paycheck to paycheck. Average Americans uh, have been divorced. I mean, the divorce rate is something like 65% now. So you, and 80% of Americans hate their jobs. Don't like the word. Eight, I shouldn't say that. 80% are indifferent towards their jobs. I can smell the smoke in my fireplace. That's what's doing it. Ugh. This log did not catch on fire. It's just, it's smoking for whatever reason. So I know that's what it is. Oh, good thing I'm a doctor. Okay. So... Apologies. So you don't want to be average. But Dr. Vaughn, then why did they teach us these smart goals, specific, measurable, yada, yada, yada? Well, I don't know. Okay. So let's get specific. Dr. V. And this is my goals. I was thinking about my goals yesterday. And I was like, dude, I've been doing goal setting wrong this whole time myself. I've been saying, I want to make a million dollars this year. That's my goal. But that's wrong. So my objective, uh, I would put financial. All right. So under the objective, I might say, could I be inspirational? <laughs> So sorry. Okay, you might want to say something like, I want to make more money than I've ever made. I want to retire. I've already retired, but you might want to say that. Inspirational. Um, I want to set, yeah, I'm just going to say it, you know, like, my goal is make more money than ever. But Dr. V, what if I only make $50,000 a year? That's not a very specific goal because I could make 50,001 and I would make more money than ever. Yeah, I know. That's where key results and initiatives come in. Okay, watch this. And what you have, what I want you to do is think about the average person, how they goal set for the year and how this is so different, right? Okay. So the key objective is make more money than ever, inspirational, because I've made good amounts of money. Now here's the, here's what you guys are interested in, the numbers. So <clears throat> what are the key results that I want? Okay. So I'll give you an example. Maybe I'll do one. I'll say, um, I want $50,000 uh, per month by May 1st, 2022. May 1st, that means I have January, February, March, April. I got four months to get to $50,000 for that month of April, right? That's the idea. Specific, measurable, numeric, unemotional. Because if I can get $50,000 a month, because here's the thinking, right? So now I have um, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. I have eight months times 50,000. That's going to be 400,000. Plus January, February, March, April, January, February, March. So maybe another, I don't know, 100,000. So that'd be $500,000 in a year. Well, Dr. V, that's not a million dollars. Yeah, I know, but I, I, I work an hour a day. <laughs> Comment if you would like to work an hour a day and make $500,000 this year. 
I mean, comment. Yes. Put a dollar sign in the comment section if you'd like to work an hour a day and make five hundred thousand dollars. So now I'm looking at this. And I'm sitting there. Well, that's not more money than I've ever made. I've actually made more money than that. So now I said I would, Brenda. Right? Yes. Yes. That's the idea, right? Hey. Oh, by the way, Anne. Welcome to the tribe. So glad to have you. She's a newbie. So now I have to go, well, fuck, <laughs> maybe that's not enough, right? So maybe I've got to get to $80,000 times eight. Oh, that's too much. 60. Uh, that's not enough. No, yeah, I think 80 times eight. That's 640. So that's, that'll probably be around. 800,000. There we go. Roughly. I have to map it out. Now, okay. That's step one. Right? That's the how. I got to get to that point. And the initiative, this is the key part. This is the part where people fuck up. The initiative is what do I have to do to get there? So now here's the part that you guys have been wanting to know. Now I got to break down my sources of income. So I'll give you an example. My YouTube number, my YouTube channel currently makes about $2,000 a, uh, a month. So YouTube, YouTube is about 2000 per month. So my objective might be grow my initiative. My initiative might be to grow my YouTube to $4,000 a month. And to do that, I might need to go, I currently have like 396,000 subscribers. Grow YouTube to 500,000 subs. I could do other things and I'm just gonna, I'm just shooting off the top of my head, but it, like I could get sponsorships. That's probably honestly the next thing I need to do is like partner with Kajabi or Coursera or protein shakes. I'm never going to do that. Diet, like supplement pill, you know, bariatric vitamins. No, not really, but I could get a sponsorship. Now, I didn't write that very specifically. Like I can say, I want two sponsorships or, you know, you gotta spend some time. I don't wanna waste all this time thinking about it. So that's one. Two, uh, book sales, you know, about 5,000 a month. I can increase my book sales, maybe write a new book, right, et cetera, et cetera. You get the idea. Number three, my uh, my challenge, some of you guys are like, I can't believe he's about to tell us the number. <laughs> well, you can, you can figure it out for yourselves. I mean, you know how many people are in the challenge. You can figure an average cost of, you know, 30, 40 bucks a person. So my challenge is roughly right, right about now is roughly about $15,000 a month. That's what I make. And I have other streams of income, but let's say this challenge, right? Um, I could grow that to, we currently have 300, 340. I could throw, grow that to a thousand uh, subs by May 1st. Is this helpful? <laughs> um, one more thing, resellers. My friend has this business, Jerry, um, called Resellers, where he helps companies who are online marketing companies, like they sell stuff like the Snuggie, and their, their merchant processing has been capped by Visa, MasterCard. Let's say they cap it at $5 million a year, but they know they can sell $10 million. My friend Jerry's business, Resellers, 
um, find, is, looks for people like like you who wants to become a reseller and they'll open a bank a business banking account and a LLC in your name and you'll start um, they'll partner you up with an online marketing company and they'll run their merchant processing through you maybe two hundred two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year so you're extending their merchant processing you're not extending their line of credit and for that he'll pay you 750 a month and however long you're in it let's say you did for a year seven hundred fifty dollars a month times twelve sometimes twelve is nine thousand dollars a year it's not going to retire you but boy that will help comment if you could use an extra 750 a month so with dr v though i said you know that's nice but i need uh what can i do for my tribe and he he goes um he goes well i'll tell you what we'll do a special doc a dr v special this is not an MLM. This is not network marketing. He goes, but if if they sign up under you, they get the seven fifty dollars a month. Then they get to sign up. Anyone they get to sign up, they make an extra hundred dollars a month every month. When their friend, their sister, their brother, the person they signed up makes seven fifty, they'll make an extra hundred dollars a month. I told my girlfriend that it's not a one-time fee. It's a hundred dollars every month that they get paid. You'll get an extra hundred dollars a month. Why? Why is Dr. V doing that? Because I also get a hundred dollars a month. Isn't that fair? That's fair, right? Um, comment if you think that's fair, because you know Jerry's my friend, and I got this extra deal. So seven fifty a month by itself would be an awesome deal, but to actually like to get the extra bonus, the Dr. V bonus, it's like awesome. And it's not MLM. You don't have to buy anything. You will never come out of pocket. It's f seriously a free 750 bucks. So I told Erica that, my girlfriend, and she and it's only in the USA. Yeah, there's criteria. And um, I told Erica that. And Erica goes, oh, my God, I'm going to make $10,000 a month. So I will tell you, in case you're wondering, no, my reseller's check last month, uh, December 31st, it came out on New Year's Eve. Anyone want to know how much I got? <laughs> I'm an influencer. So it's different. You don't have to pay anything. It's free money. Hey, Christina, pull up uh, Jerry's phone number for me because I want to put that up on the screen real quick so people can get into this. There we go. Thank you. So if you want to get, um, there's criteria. You have to have a credit score of 620 or higher uh, between under the between the ages of like 20 and 69. Yeah, you can't be over 69. That's a federal rule. And uh, you have to be in the United States. You have to have two years of, of tax returns filed. Uh, it's not an MLM. Okay, it's not an MLM. You don't have you can just you don't you can get signed up, get a free 750 for doing nothing. You don't have to sign anybody up. Uh, I'm done with MLMs, but I will tell you, I'm an influencer, so my setup's a little bit different. But my check for December 31st, like last week, I can't believe I'm about to tell you all this, was uh, $11,800. $11,800 for the month of November. I got the check at the end of December. That's for November. So if you're interested in resellers, send, send Jerry that text. Literally 561-644-3743. And um, just let me know. Yeah, share, <laughs> Sharon's guessing. And so my resellers check will probably make $50,000 by itself next summer. So maybe I need to increase this. You see what I'm saying? Anyway. Okay. Um, but it's up to you. You could be Erica is currently doing twelve hundred bucks or so, a little over a thousand dollars is what Erica is doing. Um, Kate, yeah. So if you have a, a, it's only one account per household. So just message me later, Thalesa. I mean, that's awesome. Uh, it is cool. It's okay if you don't believe it. That's fine. Dude, it's fine. I'm just gonna tell you, my girlfriend does it. I have several patients who do it. Um, 
as you can see, Carol, you know, will tell you. Yep, Carla Bradley's doing it. Comment if you are, if you're in, if you're in resellers with me, and um, you've already gotten your money. You've gotten your seven fifty. I know Kate, uh, Christina has. There you go. Y'all don't have to believe me. You can think it's a scam. Uh, hold on, Mary Doe's got her seven fifty. Tell me with me. Um, Elizabeth has gotten her money. Tracy's gotten her money. I don't think Glow, you, you've done it. Oh, Kate, of course you would believe me. You're my my girl. Uh, Mary Doe's waiting on our referral. Um, if you don't live in the checks in, in the states anymore, you can partner with a significant other or a family member that you trust. Carla's gotten two checks. Cassandra's gotten hers. Dina's gotten hers. So pull up that phone number again real quick. Margaret can't do it because she has a business. Sally can't do it because she lives in Australia. Uh, Trish can't do it because she's in Canada. Here you go. Nancy Miller. I, I forgot your husband's doing it. Got five checks. So five times 750, you know, 3,750 bucks. It's not going to, um, it's not going to retire you, but shit, man, it helps. That's your, that's your rent for some people. That's your two car payments. Um, so, and it's not MLM. You don't have to sign people up. You don't come out of pocket. It's literally a free 750. So send Jerry that text real quick. That'd be awesome. And I have a video. I have a short video on it. You can look, search my YouTube channel and you can see where I talk about resellers. Just search resellers on my YouTube channel. All right. So now I'm sitting here thinking, well, fuck, man. Like my resellers, Jerry said my resellers will do 50000 by the summer. So that might not, I mean, that's very real now. So now, if in order for me to increase my resellers, maybe I have to do a video a month to tell people about it. Maybe I have to sign up two people a, a week. Like you have to, you have to like, Put a number to this um, and to increase my challenge by a thousand subscribers I have to open it up more often I have to promote it a lot of y'all don't even know I have this monthly challenge a lot of y'all don't know that I go live in my private group 674 days in a row now you know um, so that's the financial side if you want but it starts with this make more money than ever see that shit will like get you out of bed some of y'all might need to get, um, like, get extra shifts. Comment if, like, you're starting to realize, like, oh, my God, I they pay overtime. I need to pick up extra shifts. Wait, sh Erica's a waitress. And she started, I was like, you need to pick up extra shifts. She makes about two fifty dollars a shift. She works at a high-end steakhouse. That's $250. If, if you just worked one extra day for the month, you'll have an extra $1,000. So, um, what else can we do? Financial? But let's say, Dr. V, I'm too old. I don't, you know, I'm retired. I'm happy. I got enough. I got enough in investments. That's awesome. Like, oh, I want to go this way. So, th that's awesome. So, let's say health. This one's kind of funny. In my tribe for the last couple of years, I said, I want the Bruce Lee body. You guys know Bruce Lee, Enter the Dragon? He's doing this swirling thing. He's, you know, he's a little Asian dude, but he's like cut, right? Dude's cut. And then I said, for my 49th, you know, 48th birthday, I'm going to have the body I've always wanted. I want the Bruce Lee body. And then a year goes by, 2021 flies by. I celebrate my 49th and I'm kind of like, dude, why didn't I do it? I started doing push-ups. I did 30 push-ups a day for like six weeks in a row, and then I stopped. Comment if you've ever done that. You do something, then you stop. You're on the diet for a month, and then you stop, right? And then it occurred to me when I was doing a live one day, I said, you know, the problem is Bruce Lee, while he's like an Asian icon, martial arts icon, he died at like 32. And here I am at 48, maybe subconsciously, like, I don't want to die. 
And also, I don't, I don't, I don't know if you guys know, in the Asian world, Asian sub lore, like we love Bruce Lee and Mary Doglin can agree or disagree with me, but there was some shadiness with his life. Like, you know, back in the eighties, seventies and eighties, like, um, drugs were not acceptable right and so there's all this mystery around his drug use and how he really died and it's kind of a hush up it's something we don't really talk about so i think subconsciously and i've never done any drugs that's the promise this is not cocaine this is allergies <laughs> i appreciate everyone's concern thinking that i'm like sniffling because i i'm on cocaine thank you for the innuendos i wish i was that interesting i'm not that interesting but i promised my dad i would never do drugs and so I think maybe subconsciously, I that's not a good strive. So last week, Jared Leto, comment if you know Jared Leto. Jared Leto posted, he's an actor, musician, totally hot, posted a, a picture of his, he goes, this is 50 years old. And he's like, he's ripped. He's got six pack abs. He's handsome. And then I was kind of like, that's what I need. I need a Jared Leto body. Cause he's still alive now. He probably, he probably does drugs. I don't know. <laughs> it was a nice looking photo, right, Kathy? <laughs> you should look it up, look it up. Kate, yeah, Karen, <laughs> yeah. So now I'm thinking I might need the Jared Leto body. Okay. So, so what is the how? Okay. I can tell you right now, I've got a decrease or, uh, let's say don't drink, no alcohol, no alcohol until, uh, February 14th. Right. That's a lot of calories. I mean, DR Vegan put out, you know, a bottle of wine. So you're, you're talking 600 calories a day. So I'll just lose weight. You know, in a month, I'll lose 10 pounds just by that. So the how, uh, lose, I want to lose 15 pounds, you know, um, and, you know, by this time next year, 12, 31, 22. Doesn't seem that hard. You go, Dr. V, 15 pounds in a year is not that much. Percentage-wise, I mean, I'm only 150, I think 151 this morning. I want to be around 135, but with muscle. So that's different. So, so lose 15 pounds, number three. Uh, increase muscle mass, let's say by 20%. Decrease fat mass. My my current fat, because I've got the 48-year-old beer belly. I mean, I've got the little Buddha belly. You know, so my my um, my fat percentage when you hold on one of those resistance machines is embarrassingly like 19% or something, way too high. I want to reduce fat mass from, and I'll measure it later, 19% to let's call it 12%. You can buy one of those little holders. They're not terribly accurate, but they'll give you a good idea. Now, nowhere on here had, does it say go to the gym every day. Go to the gym three times a day. Like, like hit up hard. Like, like, you know. So now the initiatives lose 15 pounds. You know, this might be, sorry, I'm running out of room, but this might be uh, more salad a day. Oh, I know what I want to do. Lose 15 pounds. I've got to have, I've, I'm eating way too much meat, guys. I mean, this is honesty. This, I, yesterday I talked about if you learn how to set goals, it makes you accountable. Why do people not learn goal setting? Because now I'm accountable. So when you start to brainstorm stuff like this, you kind of go, let's, let's be honest. I'm eating too much meat. I make killer pork ribs. I make a killer steak, tomahawk steak. I slow smoke it for an hour and a half on the grill. And then I reverse sear it. I do the caramelized onions, the Mexican onions. I do, I do grilled jalapenos with it, roasted. Uh, I do grilled tomatoes over it. 
I do non-dairy mashed potatoes that are just so delicious and flavorful, you know, and my girl loves a steak. I mean, she loves steak, but I'm eating way too much meat. So I can say in the initiative, I can say meat, red meat, that includes pork, red meat, and it doesn't have to be perfect three times a week. Limit myself to three times a week. Maybe Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Maybe I'm just grilling on weekends. And during Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I have fish, chicken, or no meat. Or you can also add, let's say, uh, one meatless day. Meat, meatless day. You see what I'm saying? So the point here is that the average person, and you're not average, writes these down as goals. But the real answer is like, no, this is the how-to. Your goals are the how-to. The goal needs to be have a Jared Leto body. See what I'm saying? So let's say, because some of y'all, and I'm going to wrap this up, but y'all get the idea. Let's say psychological health. What can you say about your psychological health that is inspirational or aspirational? What can you say that will be inspirational or aspirational? You know, like, um, happiest I've ever been. My, my thing in my tribe, what I told them, one of the things that changed my life was one day I was meditating in the morning and I came out of my meditation and, you know, I was director of bariatrics in Albuquerque. I was right. I was working all the time super focused. I was writing, you know, I was probably on my sixth or seventh book at that time. And I was really going at it. And I wasn't happy. I mean, I was working hard, but I wasn't happy. So I came out of my meditation one day. And I said, I want to be the world's happiest surgeon. I mean, it was crystal clear. I want to be the world's happiest surgeon. So how do most surgeons walk into the hospital like where are my patients my patients ready like what's going on what's the delay like what's wrong with y'all right the world's happy how does the world's happiest surgeon walk in do, 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 do. hey good morning what's up front desk girl how's it going you know and then the or director dr v i'm so sorry but we're running behind how, what does the typical surgeon do like why are you behind like oh my god i'm late again you're gonna set me back on all my my entire day now but what does the world's happiest surgeon say? Oh, you're running late? No problem. What's going on? Oh, I'll just go visit my patient. I'll do the, my paperwork. I'll go make rounds. How much time do you need? Oh, we'll, we'll have you ready in 15 minutes. Oh, that's perfect. I'll go make morning rounds and I'll be back down in 15 minutes. Is that all right? Oh, that'd be awesome, Dr. B. That's, what, that's the difference. So can you be the happiest blank ever? Happiest mom. The world's happiest mom the world's happiest cashier, the world's happiest teacher, the world's happiest kindergarten teacher. Do you know how many teachers are stressed out right now? Do you know how many nurses are stressed out right now? Can you imagine how many doctors are stressed out right now? Because you're trying to like, I got to treat patients. I got to, I got to tell them they're fucking up. I got to, I got to get them vaccinated. I got to do this and this. Dude, it's different when you realize like I'm the world's happiest doctor. And you know, your inability to process what I'm trying to tell you, not on me. It's on you. <laughs> right? So, you know, anxiety. Let's say, let's say you're struggling with stress. It's okay as an objective, as a goal. It is okay to say, um, you know, I'm going to live stress-free. It's aspirational. Probably won't happen. Now, if you said, hey, my objective is to reduce my stress by 50 percent woke you up because objectives are non-numerical you do not quantify the key results let's say okay i'm gonna be the happiest person ever i'm running out of room so now maybe your key results might be uh one decrease stress by 50%, 
decrease panic attacks to one a month instead of one a week. Okay. Now, how are you going to do this? Initiatives. One, no moves. Two, um, daily meditation initiatives. Three, daily walks. Four, um, don't hang out with my sister, <laughs> my mother-in-law. No to the mother-in-law. Or stop going to family dinner every Sunday when we know you're just going to get into a fight. So, does this make sense? This is a much better way to do your goal setting. So, look at your list. We're going to wrap up here. Look at your list and see. Okay, rewrite them. Maybe you've written... Hey, I want to increase, uh, I want to save $10,000 this year. That's not very aspirational. I want to have more money than I've ever had in the bank. I want to have more money than I've ever had in my savings account or my life insurance policy or my, you know, infinite banking account or whatever. Okay. Do you, you guys want me to do an example for just like kind of a normal person? Not that I'm. I'm not saying I'm not normal, but sometimes like these numbers, people, it doesn't register, you know, sorry for you guys to hear. In fact, comment is like $80,000 a month. Like stupid. Like you, you're like, you go, that's not realistic. Not realistic for me. I can't do that. You see what I'm saying? Do you want me to do a regular one? Yes, 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 yes. Sorry. Okay. And I'm making this up. But put in the numbers for you. Financial. Okay. And let's say um, your your savings is currently, let's say, let's say you're doing better than most. You have... Uh, 10,000. No, that's too much. You know, something like 65% of Americans don't have $500 in the bank account. Seriously, they don't have five. So, if you, and my daughter has more than that, you know. So, let's say you're a little bit above average and you have a thousand dollars currently saved. Okay, so your objective would be, um, have most money in savings than ever before. So this year, your objective is to have more money in savings, savings than ever, okay? So now your key result, you gotta say, okay, like, what does that look like? All right, so you say, all right, Dr. B, I'm going to have um, $10,000 in savings by June 1st, half of the year, 2021, 22. Actually, June 30th, right? End of the month. Like, end of the month. And then, two, I have $20,000 savings by December 31st, 2022. So you're basically saving $10,000 a month. I mean, I'm sorry, $10,000 in six months. So now you can break that down. So 10,000 divided by six, because you got six months, right? That's uh, one for roughly $1,700, okay? I just <clears throat> ballparked it. Seventeen hundred a month is what you have to do, and you'll save twenty thousand. Okay. Now you go. 
But Dr. V, <laughs> my take home, so now you have initiatives. And you have to kind of say, okay, well, my take home, not how much you make, because they take taxes and fucking FICA. <laughs> so let's say your take home is, what do you want to say, four? 4000 a month. So is that about right? Or roughly $2,000. Roughly $2,000 uh, every other week, roughly. So now your initiatives, you might go like cancel subscriptions. That's what everyone's gonna tell, tell you about. No alcohol uh, at restaurants. See, let's say a glass of wine at a restaurant, if you're eating out now, is ten dollars. You know, ten dollars a glass for like house. It's fifteen dollars a glass for a decent one, but you can buy a good bottle of wine for fifteen bucks and drink at home. I'm not saying don't drink. I'm not drinking through February, February fourteenth. But maybe for you, you can do something like that. Now, depending on what you're doing for a living, you might say, you know, I'll pick up. Pick up extra one shift per week. Now, watch this. Here's the key. Average people, when I tell them, hey, why don't you do this? They have all sorts of excuses. Say, well, I'm a single mom. Who's going to watch my baby? Who's going to watch it? That's why you have friends. That's why you have neighbors. That's why you have aunts and uncles. That's why you have mothers and mother-in-laws. Hey, I, I need to pick up this extra shift. Can you come watch the baby? And yeah, let's say that extra shift is, you know, a hundred dollars a week or whatever it is. Erica makes two fifty a shift, roughly. Which takes me to the next thing. Now you might have to sit there and think about a um, uh, second job. Listen to me. And this is where average people will say, well, Dr. V, I need my weekends off. Like, no, you don't. Why? You need your weekends off because your fucking objectives are not inspirational enough. See what I'm saying? Honestly, like, oh, I just want more money. It's not going to make you give up ESPN. That's $70 a month, guys, for just ESPN. It's not going to make you want to get a second job. I've often told people, I'm like, why don't you go clean some houses, man? I pay my maid, you know, 80 bucks to clean my house every week, every single week. She comes in three hours, cleans my house. No special training needed. So why don't you get a second job? My dad, my dad did when we immigrated to the United States. And he worked at a plant. He did exactly this. He worked at a plant job. Paid him, I think, like $14 an hour. And everyone's like, oh, my God, that's such a good job. And then if you did overtime, especially during periods when they needed extra workers, if you did overtime, they'd pay you $18 an hour. Oh, so he started doing some overtime. And on top of that, on in the evenings and on weekends, he started mowing yards. You know, you got to increase the income. You can only cut down so much. So don't listen to... You know, it's fine if you want to listen to Susie Orman and Latte Factor and Starbucks. and But you can only cut down so much. You're going to do much better if you increase the income. Increase the income. This is what my dad did. He started mowing yards. And then he took all that money. Didn't spend it. You know, I had an old broken down television. And, you know, one of those big box. The, that's the whole shelf. <laughs> a little TV inside of it. Old Magnavox thing. Color tube blew out. Still watched it. Didn't repair it. Didn't get a new one. Didn't get anything fancy. No fancy shoes. Pay less shoe stores if I was lucky. Goodwill close for the first 10 years. 16 years later, he retires independently wealthy. 16 years after coming immigrating to the United States. See, that's the difference. So then he takes all this extra money and he used it to buy and fix up um, rental houses. And he goes, I can do this because I know how to do the work. 
I can fix the toilets, I can repair the windows. If you hired somebody, you'd lose all your profit for the month. That's how you do it. You know, you got to sit down and break down this number. So, so you say $1,700 a month. Let's say you pick up a couple of shifts. Here, you pick up a shift. That's an extra, that's 400. You only have 1,300 to go. Mow yards, clean houses, second job, Uber, Uber shipped, you know, delivery, drive your car, tax, tax savings. If you start using your car for Uber or for grocery deliveries, that's a tax write-off. Your car is now a tax write-off. So you can save on taxes. Oh, here's one. Don't spend my tax refund. Let's say you're going to have a tax refund of, you're expecting a tax refund of $2,000. Put it in savings. Boom, you're already there. But what does the average person do? Yeah. It's spent. It's spent before they even get it. In fact, they are anxious to get it. They get pissed off. I haven't gotten my tax refund yet. I haven't gotten my tax refund yet. Like, why are you so anxious? Well, I already spent it. That's the real answer. Does this make sense? And you can use this for anything. Passion, your marriage, relationships, moving. You know, hey, I want to move. Um, I, I want to travel. I want to downsize. I want to experience the world. You know, I want to meet more people. We talked about this in yesterday's, you know. I want to meet more people than I've ever met. That'd be crazy. Does that make sense? All right. I, hopefully this has been helpful.